Hello there and welcome to a new video for Age of Wonders 4. In this one I'm going to guide you through the Shadow Tomes. I'm going to go over the contents of these books, give you a couple of ideas what I think the spells are good for, synergies and a couple of ideas that I hope you haven't had yet for yourself. So there's timestamps down below leading to each and every tome, so if you're looking for something in particular go right there. Let's get started with the Tome of Souls. Here we got our baseline necromancy tome. It enables you to harvest souls, which is the currency you need for undead units, and it enables you to recruit skeleton units, as does every necromancy tome, by the way. Skeleton units are cool, they're cheap and available polearm units, and you also gain access to the bone golem, so you have with this book a polearm unit and a shock unit all in one just by having access to it. The Bone Golem is also meant a little bit as a fortification destroyer, so it's a little bit of a jack-of-all-trades, low-cost budget siege unit, but it really does the trick early on. You also gain the ability to inflict soulbound to the enemy, which will make them drop more souls, otherwise you will, with this book, you will start harvesting souls from every unit you kill, and that just enhances the income either as a map spell, unit enchantment for battle mages, and you also gain access to a sweet mini nuke that's 20 damage for one unit and a nice splash around it. Especially powerful against balled up units. And I want to point out that it's frost and fire damage, so it's hard to resist it because usually you're only resistant against one of each. Soul Overflow is one nice buff spell on top of that. You can boost up the damage a little bit, maximum HP bonus, and most importantly, a debuff cleanse. I love this spell. This is really easy to overlook how good this spell is, especially due to the hex-wide negative status remove. Tier 1 spell. Really good stuff. So that's where things are summed up with this book. You of course can upgrade your hero also to do this uh, soulbound trick. And that's that. I want to summarize about this book that it's a real nice package with a lot of options that go beyond just raising skeletons, especially Soul Fire and Soul Overflow are really nice methods of spending your time with this tome without just raising undead. So the Tome of Cryomancy. This one is the baseline ice book. We gain access to crowd control spells and unit enchantments and a few units here. So crowd control wise, Ice Coffin does an amazing job in freezing enemies outright. It doesn't deal much damage, but it is a strong on point disable when you need it. The White Witch is able to deal a freezing blast, which works very similar to that spell. It just deals more damage, don't ask why, but <laughs> nah, it's just, it's okay. It has a low cooldown and it's really, really nice to have this unit on top of that. She's also a battle mage, so she's synergizing well with all those enchantments that strike into that venue. You also gain access to frost blades and frost arrows, just your regular frost enchantments. Worth noting here is that you deal extra damage to frozen and slot units, so it's synergistic with a whole scheme here to have that thing online. You gain access to a skirmisher unit, which is really interesting in so far, as it will turn into a tier 3 skirmisher unit if you keep it alive long enough, and that's where this thing will shine. So it's pretty cool to have it, but all in all, I personally felt like the access to freezes is what makes this book really, really stand out, because freezes are really powerful, especially early on. You also gain access to the Blizzard spell, which is important for you in so far, as it gives you the ability to apply minus status resistance on the enemy on the world tile. This is important to use, especially on high tier armies, because, you know, otherwise high tier units will have an easy time resisting your freezes. The School of Cryomancy is a province enhancement that you can build there, which is giving you always some knowledge, but if you happen to live in a snow and icy region, it starts to crank out mana even. This goes highly synergistic with a book later down the road. So altogether, it's a really good book when you want to control the enemy a bit. Highly synergistic with the dark culture because they gain access to a spell which slows enemies just right from the get-go. Tier 2. We have the Tome of the Doom Herald as the Morale Destroyer book. It's the best book to annihilate the enemy's morale and 
take advantage out of it in the shadow roster. You gain various tools for this uh, job, a map spell to soften up your enemies, a map hex radius spell stealing some morale, some race transformation making your units kind of morale vampires. It's important to note out that your guys will get a better mood from that and a unit enchantment to top it off to deal more damage against demoralized targets. I love this package. Top it off with a Battle Mage Banshee, which has also the ability to hit harder against demoralized targets, and a nice big demoralizing debuffing spell topped off with some teleportation to make things really annoying. You also gain access to the Doom Depth Trench, which is a province improvement which cranks out substantial amounts of mana and knowledge all on its own, and if you happen to be evil, it's getting even better because then you can't get a lot more of the same juice. It makes the city a little bit unhappy though. It's really good though. You you bestly you, you ideally use this thing in your city when you have access to that book because those resources are always worth it. So T2 Necromancy Tome. This is a well a support heavy book as far as I've seen. You gain access to various supporting methods for your undead, be it a map spell to heal your undead, be it a spell, a unit to support your undead, the necromancer gains the ability to strengthen undead, but he also has the ability to raise zombies. Zombies are also a trademark thing from the necromancy book, especially the fact that you gain access to the rotting explosion, which allows you to just destroy one of your zombie units for a big nasty splat. 30 damage all on its own already quite nice. It's two hex radius so that explosion is really uh, a big one and also applies decay. I love decay because it's not only a damage over time effect it also negates healing which is so powerful against so many different enemies. You gain the ability to gain to raise enemies as zombies and most importantly your battle mages also gain access to the decaying stat so i really love this package because it goes so well in supporting your own units and debuffing the enemy as well by denying them their temporary hp this is a hell of a strong trade the dk is basically alone and worth it to just take that book even if you don't want to dabble too deep into necromancy with your whole game plan. You gain on top of that access to a soul well, which is just cranking out some mana if it has some research posts around it, but you mostly buy this for the soul income. The soul income is why you want to have that. Last but not least, Unholy Leader powers up your undead armies even more, so this is a real nice support trait for your heroes. Let's hop over to the tier 3 books and start with Tome of the Cold Dark. It's the ice book. It's really the ice book. It makes your whole freeze game plan with the Cryomancy Tome even better. And I highly suggest you to use these tomes together. That's where they shine the best. So, first of all, I want to talk about Marching Winter. This spell allows you to enchant one of your cities and start spreading arctic terrain around it. You gain extra production out of that. So you're not going to suffer from that, quite the opposite. And remember, the School of Cryomancy will start cranking out mana from that all of a sudden. And you also gain access to a race transformation, which makes your units love that frozen terrain without any downsides. There's no resistance debuff, nothing. It's just a flat out bonus for your species. I really like that one. And you also gain the ability to do that on the enemy side of the terrain. It's also worth noting that this is again a status resistance remover, really important for your preparation. So if you have a lot of mana available, if you're able to flash freeze the enemy and then spit a blizzard on top of the head, you have already melted away a lot of status resistance. You also gain existent, uh, access to the snow spirits, the evolved units from the cryomancy tome. And these guys are really nice, you know? They can teleport and gain a chance to just uh, freeze around them while doing so and they have access to a 90 percent freeze spell that's always nice to have on top of that they are your typical skirmisher unit 
quite vulnerable, high damage, but with all the crowd control they can churn out, they are really useful. And the last tool you get with that uh, thing here is the Veil of Darkness, camouflaging your armies for three turns. That's really amazing. I think in any PvP environment, this spell is amazing to use against your poor, poor enemies. The last thing we got there is the Frost Spire. Knowledge, and even more knowledge if we have snow and ice around us. But most importantly, our units gain ice touch for one battle if they are around. So they gain the ability to freeze enemies. So if you have the chance to visit a city with that frost spire thing before a big fight, this is amazingly powerful. Really, it's um, it's important to point out how big of a bonus it is when you have the chance to randomly completely disable parts of the enemy units or, or the enemy army. This is really a big bonus. Don't overlook that one. And, you know, I don't know why they talk about access to blinding. The literal only way to blind your enemy is with blinding magic. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I as far as I understand that, this is only for your hero, but if it's working for the entire ar army, then I misread that skill. Please let me know in your comment section if you know more than me. Let's get on over to tier 3. The Tome of the Grand Transformation is another undead book. It contains heavy support for the undead species. It contains the Whiteborn Transformation, which allows your undead units to lifesteal with no downside. That's really, really good. All right, you, you, the downside is they are all undead and they inherit all the downsides of being undead. Okay, okay. But beyond that, it's really, really big because you don't need to support your units as hard anymore. The Fetid Legion is another heavy support enchantment for your armies. Extra HP, 10 HP are a lot, don't underestimate, and access to weakening aura, so all your melee units start debuffing the enemy while just standing right next to them. I love this. On top of that, you gain the, ex the ability to buff your mana income by just enchanting resource nodes in your domain, and a defensive enchantment for your cities, raising city stability, powering up your undead. It's, it's really one support heavy thing. It's, you know... You could skip it on your undead path, but picking it up gives you access to so much beef, so much meat on the bone, so to say, pun intended. So let's get it over to the Tome of Oblivion instead. I think the Tome of Great Transformation is easy to understand. This one is one of my favorites so far. It gives you access to a variety of interesting spells, although I don't know if I misunderstood this one or if it's just bad. But more about that in a second. First of all, I want to talk about the Insanity here. Insanity is a status which makes the unit uncontrollable and attack random targets. I love this one. Sleep of Oblivion lets you outright kill a unit. It comes back after two turns. Insane. But, you know, you can use that as a finisher. If I don't misunderstand that spell. But after all, if the unit comes back, it's disabled for a while anyways. You also have Fog of Insanity as a disabler for city defenses the enemy will be struck with insanity with a 10 percent chance every turn fighting in your domain this is annoying to deal with because your army becomes so unreliable in this environment and it's really hard to counter you cannot have so much stat cleansing or debuff cleansing because it will happen randomly all over the place it's not bald somewhere it's hard to cleanse that. Really powerful thing to defend yourself. Really, really powerful. The chance is low, but it doesn't stop the entire fight. And that's where this thing goes goes really crazy. The Devouring Void, on the other hand, has nothing to do with insanity. It just deals 30 damage whenever somebody passes through it. It's basically like a blade wall that spreads randomly over the map. And wow, you know, you can, you can do so much shenanigans with that. Just spread it and uh, inhibit the enemy movement. Summon Living Fog is also one thing that I love about this book. This fighter unit looks like nothing much. It does only have access to Mind Strike, but you know Mind Strike turns enemies insane, and it also deals unblockable damage. It's also quite resilient, and it's an annoying unit because either you ignore them, and you live with the fact that they turn people insane, or you turn your attention to a 
totally bland unit that's just important to get rid of. These guys are just annoying to deal with because, you know, you have to get rid of them because that's it's just too powerful to let them roam free. But on the other hand, they don't have any special abilities, so it's not worth focusing them. So I really like this unit. Spreading a few over the uh, un over the army can can be really really nasty. So the ritual of Somnia. I don't know if the wording is correct. It'll stun everybody on the battlefield two turns long with a ninety percent chance. I feel like this should only target enemies maybe it is meant that it only stuns enemies then it is a massive one i mean i found this really hard to read i hope it does work like that if so it gives the ability to just disable the enemy for a mass for for the entire beginning of a fight giving you, you the ability to position as you want to i really hope that the wording is that but i haven't tried out the spell myself yet now let's talk about huh? No, my crush is uh, not that. Yeah, let's talk about the Tome of the Reaper. The Tome of Oblivion is, like I said, a really, really nice thing. The Ritual of Zomnia, I just don't know how, if I understood that one correctly. Tome of the Reaper it is. So here we gain access to lots of different wonderful things. For one, we gain access to strong soul income methods. Soul Siphons as a siege project, which gives us zombies and souls while we're sieging the enemy. Harvest Population, transform our population and souls directly. Really good stuff so far, but it doesn't end here. We also gain access to instant death effects. Mark for Death is killing the enemy when it is over. You know, the unit cannot recover HP here. We have again something that denies the enemy support. And once the effect expires, they die. So they also lose some morale while this is on. So this is a real nice uh, spell to start off with. We also gain greater reanimation. We can reanimate any unit with that. It will die at the end of a battle, but it is an ability to just last, last so much longer. It's just so, such a powerful spell to use. And last but not least, the Reaper, which is, well, it's a tier 5 unit, so that alone says something. And he comes with weakening blows, but that's really not nearly as cool as the Finger of Death, which will just kill the enemy with a 60% chance, non hero units of course, and if not, 45 damage. And if they die from this ability, you gain a zombie. This is uh, really, really a a cool guy to work with, especially since, you know, this is just a nice addition to the entire on that roster. He also comes with greater corpse consumption, which will buff and heal this guy by a lot. You also can have that for your own you for your own hero if you want to have that. Okay, Tom of the Reaper, instant death. Soul income, these are the two major um, sales points of this tome. Let's get to the last of the list, the Tome of the Eternal Lord. As all tier 5 units, the spells in this book are quite bonkers. They are aimed a lot around debuffing, so here we have a combat enchantment for 3 turns, everybody will suffer damage, blindness and weakening. That alone is really a wicked package. We have access to true death magic, an enchantment which allows us to inflict marked for death with our battle mages and supporters. This is just bonkers. I love this one because, you know, marking for death with 30% chance on battle mages, you got to take into account that they can shoot up to three times. And if I didn't misunderstand anything here, this means that this chance will get rolled three times. Nice stuff. And battlefield reanimation. Yeah, so all friendly undead units come back to life. All freaking friendly undead units. And the enemy corpses will also come to life. So this is one of the spells you can pop when the enemy starts to churn through your armies. And oh no, I'm not done yet. So this is really, really, really bringing the longevity of the undead uh, species to a, to a pinnacle. We also have access to entire armies by just a spell, 
This is really cool. Nothing special though. You find this kind of spell in a lot of tomes in the long run. I really love the Eternal One trait though, as it makes your hero unkillable in the in the course of the fight. So the Tome of the Eternal Lord is a lot about longevity and debuffing the enemy. So I really like this one, especially if you're already on, a, on that route. So the Shadow Affinity books are a lot about necromancy, but not only. And I want to point out here that it's worth dipping only a toe into the necromancy if any of these books synergize well with your own playstyle. So that's that for this video. I hope you found it helpful. Feel free to leave me your comments down below. Point out any synergies and things that I haven't spot here, spotted here because I love to hear from you folks what you have found. And as usual, thumbs up and subscriptions are really welcome. Feel free to check out the playlist link down there. There is a playlist link to all the Age of Four, uh, Wonders 4 videos I made so far info videos only and of course a big big thanks to the supporters of this channel i deeply appreciate what you guys are doing and check out patreon paypal and buy me a coffee if you want to find out more and if not thanks for watching this video until the very end i hope you're having a great day and see you soon